guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing the topic of how to change the family and marriage structure. And we have a special guest. We have Sister Dana Blackwood in the building. Sister Dana, please hey. introduce yourself. To hey, us. hey, hey, thank you again. Hi, at Ezron and all the viewers. My name, of course, Sister Dana. And I have this awesome privilege to be with you today. Um, for my profession wise, I am a marriage and family therapist uh, with limited permit. I work at Holden Hope MFT, great firm, look us up. Ooh, ooh. Uh, we are there for uh, helping people hold hope in the things that they go through. So um, traumas, infidelity, stress, communication problems, all those things uh, we talk and discuss. So I'm just looking forward to this conversation today. Amen, amen. Today we have a question to be discussing the topic of how to change the family and marriage structure. The first question we have for today is, what led you to your interest in becoming a therapist? What an awesome question, Ezra. Um, I was asked this question, I think, on my job interview. And the thing that really popped into my mind, like the very, very first thing was when I was a little girl, um, eavesdropping, you know, as children, you know, parents on the phone, eavesdropping, what's going on? Um, I was hearing my mom talk to someone who was uh, thinking about getting divorced um, from their husband. And at a tender age, I'm like, you know, what's divorce? What are these things? What is that? And um, just from that time, I just wanted to just learn more how I can help people. And as I grow, grew older, of course, you know, people will be like, you know, Dana, da -da 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 -da, like, just give me their whole life story. I'm just like, okay, I'll just sit with you and hold it, give you advice, you know, be someone that you can vent to, talk to. And then I was thinking to myself, and I'm like, why not make money doing this? <laughs> Why not make money listening to people, helping people, and just really encouraging people, um, you know, along life's road. And as I got older and older, um, I'm not that old, guys, but, you know, <laughs> I'm a little old. But as I <laughs> got a little older, um, I was at camp. And I remember before I was even, even a um, camp director, there was a situation where there was a child, they had some kind of issue. And because I wasn't a professional counselor, I wasn't able to help them. And that was really what really propelled me and pushed me into like really um, going into this full time. I wanted them to say, hey, Sister Dana, we have such such a kid at camp. They're going through this issue. And can you come help and, and counsel them? So that's really what was like the last like really push to say, Dana, keep going, keep doing this thing because... I've called you to help people. I've called you to be an encourager, a teacher, cheerleader, things that people need in this time that sometimes they're not even getting in their personal lives, even with their spouse or with their mom, with their dad. So you be that support. You be that place for people to come to, share their vulnerability, share who they are. And yeah, and that's how I got here <laughs> to be a therapist. So graduated last year. Woo -woo. Hashtag pride, woo woo. And even just that journey, Ezra, that probably is a whole nother video with <laughs> how I got um, finished education, all of that, just seeing the goodness of God in that. And just that testimony is a whole separate video, but I'll leave it there. <laughs> and now we're going into the second question for today is How are family changing, slash, what are some of the most common problems presented to the family? So I love this question. How has the family been changing? And as I was, you know, doing some research, looking up and even just reflecting back, I was like, God, the family has changed so much from what was ori your original purpose of, you know, marriage between a, a man and a woman, and then just that part of being fruitful and multiply. From there, when sin was introduced, it flipped and turned upside down what God's original intent was for family and um, just short um, education on different types of family. We might say, hey, so Dana, what are you talking about? What other families are there out there? So, of course, you have your nuclear family, which is mom, dad, 
children. So there's a, a, a shift in the dynamics of family where there's a lot of single parents um, in the household now, a lot of single moms out there. And shout out to single moms, you know, you're doing your thing out there. And um, it's been a it's been a shift. So you have your single parent families, then you have extended family where you have like family living with you. So when I was growing up, you know, I had my mom, my dad, my siblings, and I also had a grand aunt that was with me. And then sometimes my grandma will pop in. So you're seeing a little bit of those families starting to come up where, especially with the financial struggles right now, it makes sense that, you know, your grandma, your aunt, or, or someone comes to live with you to help that, you know, help share financial, uh, financial burdens of the family. So you have that. And then you also have the childless family, which is, of course, just mom or dad or just a couple without a child. And one thing that I also saw in my research is that fertility is really declining. So basically not a lot of people are having children. And that's such an interesting thing because, you know, God called us to be fruitful and multiply, but you hear a lot of stories of, oh, you know, I'm a Christian woman, been married to my husband for 10 years, no child. So I think that that dynamic is just so interesting. And that is even on the rise, especially in the U.S., childless family and then last but not least you have your blended or your step families which are of course when um you have a mom mom might divorce um your biological dad gets remarried brings that family together so it's a blending of families and that is also under rise as well the stepped or blended families and um common issues and problems that they face as Ron is like communication problems. I mean, I think in every aspect of any kind of relationship, there's going to be some kind of uh, communication issue, whether it's one person under, um, doesn't understand, you know, you have a kid saying, mom, you know, this, this is happening to me. And mom's like, no, go to your dad or, or you know, just disregard what you're saying or you have, um, you know, parents arguing about how to parent their children. So you have mom who's strict and who want to beat you, like, you know, Jamaicans, you know, they want to beat you to, you know, whip you into shape. And you might have dad, which is like, no, let's talk to them. Let's do some timeouts. Let's just do different things. So you have child rearing differences that might cause a little friction, you know, within the family. And also what's so interesting is that I was reading a book, I believe it's called um, Raising Generation Z. And it talked about how parents, like the after the baby boomers generation, I think it's Generation Y or one of those, um, they found that they didn't want to raise their children how they were raised. So they were raised going to church. They had strict routines. They had um, curfews, all of these things. And for that generation, they're saying, mm, I don't know if I want to have um, my child to have to follow such a strict regime or such a strict thing. So I'm going to be more lenient. I'm going to, you know, allow them to date early or I'm allow them to choose if they want to go to church or not. And then that also affects um, the children in the long run when they don't have boundaries, they don't have um, things to keep them in check. They just do whatever. And um, in the book, it was just saying that Generation Z is being raised as a godless or um, they don't know their God. Like how in my generation, the millennials or even the ones before me, how we were in church, we were in Sunday school because mom didn't say, okay, do you want to go to church or not? Ezra, and has your mom ever said or your parents said, you want to go to church or not? I have a Guyanese mother okay. um, that was raised up in the church, okay. both sides of my family, so that was not an option that I was given. Right. And 
for for just a few of the generation Z is um thank God your mom was like that. But for some, it's like uh, I was raised in the church. I did all these things in the church, and I don't want to subject my child to this. So they have that change or that or or that's where the dynamics of even just spirituality are being impacted in children that they're not seeing the need to go to church or they're not. Um, understanding, oh, why do I have to pray? Why do I have to do this? It's like we have to reteach, you know, what Christianity is or who God is to this generation. So that comes goes back to the family and how the family is rewired. And just one more uh, thing I want to mention on that is anger. Anger. Anger is a big issue where families come into therapy because there's other that dad is expressing his anger in a in a in a way that's not good or healthy or the child is lashing out in school so the child is either bullying or the child's doing this or they're doing that just the expressions of anger is not being um um fostered right or because it's okay to be angry because the bible says um be angry but sin not it's okay to be angry but sometimes some expressions of anger aren't good so where you go from where i was talking about the beatings the beatings go into actual physical abuse where you're leaving marks on your child or um you're doing just abusing them mentally or emotionally it just goes so far and it impacts a child it leaves an imprint on that child so um going to therapy for families that are that's having issues with anger is a common thing you know my son is throwing temper tantrums or my daughter is slamming doors or you know issues like that so those are just some common things that you see in families and also quickly blended families of course you have that dynamic where you have one family that's already been established and then another family coming in and it and it goes crazy like this because there wasn't a time to really sit down and say, okay, Johnny, I'm bringing in um, this new partner. He's going to be your new dad or he's stepping into the role of dad. It's just usually we get married, Johnny, this is Mark. And then you live in the rest of your life. There's, there was no conversation. There was no bonding. There was no way of um, fostering a relationship together. It's just like, here, here's what it is. Deal with it. And that impacts um, a lot of people, especially the person coming in and also the person or the child that's been there. So blended families also come in with a lot of friction um, for a family therapy. So yeah. An amazing response. And to speak on the communication part, something I learned about communication is that, you know, like how people usually say that communication is key. I say comprehension is key because you can be able to communicate with somebody, but if they don't comprehend it, then that's where the communication gets messed up. So I say communication is the lock and comprehension is the key. Yeah, that's good. Because you, me and Sister Dana can have a conversation, but then with something I say, Sister Dana interpreted different, and that caused a lot of problems because sometimes people may yeah. interpret stuff different. So with conversations or argument, make sure that the person understands exactly what you say. So if you said something, tell them, repeat to me what you heard I just said. That's so good, Ezra. It's so, so good. Always remember this. Communication is a lot. Comprehension is the key. I love that. That's so I'll good. be moving on. I'm still in that. I'm still in that. I'm still in that. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, the word is better around. Now we're going into the third question. How are marriages changing? Slash, what are the some what are some of the most common problems presented in the marriage structure? Yeah. So how marriages change as well. That's such a good question. When I was growing up, it was like the goal is to get married. It is just to go get married, um, start your family, all of that good stuff. But for um, us nowadays growing up, you hear a little bit more of, okay, you know, I'm living with my partner and we're living together like 15 years or we've been living together 20 years. That cohabilitation is going on where you're living with that person, but you're not getting the benefits of, you know, being um, married by in the legal sense, in the government's eyes. And a lot of people are moving that way. They're moving away from being married because they're saying, why should I be married? Why, why do I have to get married when I have my partner, 
we have our apartment, we have our children. What like why get married? And um, for those that are probably thinking that way too, I just want to challenge you and say there are benefits to being married. For instance, <laughs> this um, stimulus package, married couples get money. There's different aspects of marriage that give some benefits. So I'm thinking too, like, dang, I wish I had a child, well, married and have a child because some children is giving me extra money too. So there's so many benefits to where God is talking about being fruitful and multiply. There's so many blessings that come along with that. So I encourage you, get married, seal the deal. I know they say like, you know, why buy the cow if the milk is free? No, buy the cow that you could get some good up, good up milk all the time. That milk won't stale. You'll always have some good milk from, <laughs> from that cow. And um, also another thing to consider as one, which I kind of forgot about in the family question, but I'll link it all together is COVID. COVID sent a lot of people into whack. And um, the couples that I'm seeing now, um, they're coming in with the issues that I'll talk about a little bit later, but they're coming in with that issue. And then on top of it, like, you know, you have like your bag of Skittles, right? And you're like, okay, I need to get to the to my red Skittles. So you start picking out your red Skittles and say, okay, I'm gonna work on these red Skittles. Throwing COVID is like throwing M&Ms on top of the Skittles. And you're trying to sort through the Skittles, try try your red Skittles. And then you have your red M&Ms that look the same like the Skittles. And you're just in this whole like, ah, kind of thing going on. That's what COVID is doing right now to our marriages and our families. They have, for marriages especially, um, I've been reading a lot of things which are saying that, you know, couples other were made or broken during um, COVID. Marriages were broken or they or they flourished in um, COVID, which are so understandable. I know some marriages, sometimes um, how the schedule was before COVID or BC, as I like to say, BC, um, you know, they were able to, if they had a fight, they could go outside, they could go to Fridays, they could, you know, just go somewhere separate from their partner. But with COVID, you get upset, you can't go outside because you don't want to bring the COVID inside to you. So even if you went to another room or you went to what or or you just went to the bathroom, there was no escape from your partner, to put it in that way. There was no way for you to hide and say, ah. I'm married, you know, I want to, I just want to scream, but you know, I can't go outside. I can't do what I'm used, used to doing because of COVID. So a lot of issues that I'm seeing now with just some couples that I'm talking with is a lack of intimacy. And you're like, Dean, a lack of intimacy that doesn't make sense. They're with each other 24 seven, like what was going on for them? But even before COVID, this problem was made bigger or exasperated. And couples are coming saying that, you know, um, we're not as physical as we used to be. We're not as intimate as we used to be. And we want to come back and be intimate with each other and just walking them through that process of, okay, so what's going on for you? And just processing before COVID what was going on for you now with COVID? What has it shown you? What, what has been highlighted? You know what I'm saying? So intimacy is a problem. Communication, Ezra, as you said, I hope everybody wrote down what you said about the comprehension and listening because a lot, a lot, a lot of people are coming to counseling saying, my, my partner is not hearing what I'm saying. They're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm telling them the sky is blue and they're still, they're interpreting as the sky is is pink. What? How, how did you get pink from blue? What's going on? Why are you not processing what I'm saying? And a lot of arguments, a lot of things are taking place because again, there's nowhere to escape because of COVID. <laughs> so the arguments will either be the same or the arguments will intensify because one partner is still not understanding what the other partner is saying. So I love how you said before in which couples or even just people should ask, do you understand what I'm saying? Are you understanding? Like slow the conversation down. So if I'm telling you 
Ezra and the sky is blue and there's white clouds. It's okay to say, okay, Ezra, are you, are you hearing me that I'm saying that the sky is blue and the clouds are white? And if the part, if your partner says, well, um, I think you said the sky is green and the clouds are yellow, go to counseling. That's, that was, that's a good indication that you need to go to counseling because there's some kind of disconnect or something there that your partner's not catching or your partner's not gripping. And that's going to cause frustration and anger and all of these things to build up in you. And it's, it's just not a good place to be there. <laughs> um, some other issues that face marriages, infidelity. There's a, um, I think his name, what's his name? Robin or something like that. A guy that just came out, he's a guru. And he said he had a video that his, um, you know, he cheated on his wife and, you know, the wife chose to stay and, and all of that good stuff. And I'm not knocking that, but in his advice, he would always say, okay, men don't cheat or men make sure that you're looking out for those things that might lure you. And that person himself was lured away by the very thing that he was telling other men not to be lured into. So infidelity, it's a choice. They, you choose whether to answer that text. You choose whether to be intimate with that person. You choose, it's a choice. So it's so that you choose to love and respect your partner or you choose to give into that lust or that evil desire that was born in from the inside the bible talks about just in the heart that's where the lust starts so even in your heart you got to check your heart whether family whether you're in a, a couple relationship always check your heart see what's going on in your heart and then if something's going awry talk to your partner talk to someone talk to mom talk to dad talk to your husband talk to your wife tell them what's going on and if it really gets overwhelming come to counseling that a professional can sit down and walk you through it and help you um, talk about what's going on inside of you that's causing you to want to cheat or causing you to do something. And then uh, one last thing I want to talk about is fighting about money. So especially this, I understand the fighting about money in this time, especially when as COVID hit, millions of people lost their jobs, millions of people had to go on unemployment, millions of people had to say, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to make ends meet? How is this going to happen? So that fighting about money, they always say that, oh, that's the number one cause for marriages breaking up is that, you know, that money talk. But I feel that the number one reason that marriages break up is a lack of communication. And which we talked about before. Talk to your partner. Tell your partner how you're feeling. Use your I statements. Um, just use, I'm feeling this way. I'm upset that you did this, or I feel a way that this is happening. Start talking with your partner and really interact with them and tell them how you feel. Don't hide it. I, I love how somebody said, don't keep the devil's secrets. If you feel a way inside of you or you feel that you're struggling with something, tell your partner. Don't be afraid to, to say, I'm having problems with lust. I'm, I'm watching a lot of porn and we're married and we should be intimate that way. Don't keep the devil's secrets. Shame him. Be free in God. Be free in Jesus. Use your freedom. And talk to your spouse or talk to your mom or talk to your dad or talk to an accountability partner that can help you walk through things. So, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and having this wonderful conversation with us, Sister Dana. Sister Dana, info will be in the link below in the description. I'll make sure that I link uh, um, information in the description. Thank you so much, Sister Dana, for coming along. Yeah. Guys, we'll be back next week for part two of the conversation tune in for part two of this video if you haven't already like subscribe if you're new turn on your post notification and this is motivation for young christian i'll see you guys next week in part two